What are the dead things that I'm carrying around that no longer serve me? Perhaps they never served me. Perhaps they are prohibiting me from serving God the way that I actually want to. Hey there, this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com, where we chase purpose, not money. Welcome back to another episode of Redefining Wealth. If you're brand new here, here's what you need to know. We are a community that believes firmly that wealth is so much more than money and material possessions. We believe in the 12th century definition of wealth, which is the condition of well-being. So each and every week, I show up here every Thursday to help unpack the six pillars of wealth. These are the areas of life that impact our finances without us recognizing it. And so you might have been looking for a straight up personal finance show. I'm a financial psychology girl, so I tend to look at how we interact with our finances, more so from the mindset and from our behavior, not so much the skill set stuff. So a little different, but we're all on the same page. We're trying to get to the same agenda, which is hopefully allowing you to live your life's purpose and earn more without feeling like you have to chase money. And being fulfilled in that process. So to my OG listeners, to my purpose chasers, welcome back to you. And thank you so much for coming back. There's been so much going on in the media, in the world, in our day-to-day lives. Man, 2020 has been interesting to say the least. And I remember several months ago, my team and I were mapping out content and what are we going to be sharing on social and how do I connect it to the podcast? And we ran across something that I found interesting. You know, those calendars, those national calendars with all the random days that you're like, who started this? Where did this come from? I've been paying attention to those more and more and something stood out to us. It was National Weed Your Garden Day, June 13th. This is in the United States, of course, National Weed Your Garden Day. And it just stood out for some reason. And I thought, hmm, maybe I'll do something around pruning because I have researched before the power of pruning, right? The power of being able to take a look at your life and remove anything that's damaged or diseased or is dying, When you prune a plant or a shrub, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make sure that you improve the airflow and that you can encourage better branches to grow and that it's healthier and that it's more um, beautiful, pleasant to look at and that you cut away the disease. And I did an episode some time ago that made reference to pruning and having to be selective about the branches that you needed to remove from your life, right? Because again, the goal is to remove unwanted branches and dead and diseased branches so that you could have new and healthier growth. And so because it was June, I was thinking second half of the year, I really want to encourage people to look at what's worked and what hasn't for these first six months or so of the year And then be intentional about cutting away what isn't serving you in this season, right? And to encourage you and forewarn you that if you are going to allow yourself to go through a pruning process, that it will be uncomfortable, that it will be painful, and it doesn't feel natural (laughs) to elect to cut away at yourself. But there's something on the other side of that, right? And I know even before the winter started in our neighborhood, everyone was cutting away at the trees. Now, I'm from California, moved back to Georgia, and Georgia's very green. And people are serious about their trees and their shrubs. It doesn't feel like folks are as serious in the city, you know, coming from L.A., And so I remember when our trees were being pruned 
And my first thought was like, oh my gosh, what did these gardeners do? They have destroyed the tree. They've destroyed the tree. And my husband said, no, you got to just give it time. Watch and see. Because when it comes back, it's going to be better. Like it's going to be full. It's going to look good. And you know, you forget about it. You walk away. It was pruned. You walk away. You look up one day, the spring arrives and the tree is just magnificent. It was like overnight, all of a sudden, we saw these beautiful flowers budding. And every day, all three of us, my husband and daughter and I were like, look at the trees in the backyard. So we know that in order for them to blossom and show up so beautifully and strongly, that pruning season they went through was necessary. And I know that as a woman of faith, pruning is so important to my own process. Because if I don't look around at least every once in a while and take inventory and ask myself, what are the dead things that I'm carrying around that no longer serve me? Perhaps they never served me. Perhaps they are prohibiting me from serving God the way that I actually want to. Whether that's a relationship a friendship, a partnership, a way of being, a limiting mindset, a negative attitude, a story from my past, an old wound, an insecurity, whatever that is, at some point, if you agree to allow yourself to go through the pruning season, then there's a lot that can be left behind. A lot that doesn't have to go with you into your next season. And so I was thinking of all of that at the beginning of this year when we looked at the calendar and saw National Weed Your Garden Day. Now, obviously, pruning shrubs and pulling weeds are not the same, right? But your girl was going to find a way to try to tie it in. I was like, you know, I don't have a green thumb, but... Outdoor activity, (laughs) I can tie them together. I'll find a way. But it was sitting here on my calendar, National Weed, Your Garden Day. And the team, the editing team has been asking me, hey, need your episode, need your episode, need your episode. We usually stay weeks ahead of schedule. And for some reason, I just couldn't bring myself to record. I just didn't feel released. And then... George Floyd died in Minneapolis. And then I saw a video of a woman named Amy Cooper who was in Central Park, a specific area of Central Park where dogs are to be leashed. And because a black man asked her to leash her dog, she called the police Well, actually, before she called the police, she warned him instantly. I'm going to call the police and tell them an African-American man is threatening me. He asked her to leash her dog. And she became irate and aggressive and threatening. And she called the police and yelled as if this man was approaching her or attacking her, understanding and knowing what the consequence of the police believing a white woman and never giving a black man a chance to say what his side of the story was. She knew what was possible and yet she went for it. And these two incidents happened in the same day. And as the days went on, the heaviness and the heartbrokenness, is that a word? I have no idea. The heavy heart that I carried, the way my heart broke, meme after meme, Facebook post after Facebook post, text after text, 
with my Black friends and family devastated and scared with my nephew, who's a 19-year-old student at Pepperdine University. International business came out of high school, straight-A student saying, Auntie, why do they want to kill us? My heart broke day after day, hour after hour, until Friday. Well, it was still breaking, but on Friday, I couldn't take any more. And I had to express how I was feeling. And I posted an IGTV, as I often do, on Instagram, entitled Dear White Friend, You Have to Pick a Side. And the video went viral. At the time of this recording, I think there's about 300,000 views and maybe 10, 11,000 shares. That doesn't include people taking it and screen sharing it and adding it to all these other places that, you know, people are just randomly telling me about. And I'll let you go to my Instagram, Seek Wisdom PCW, and watch the video if you haven't. But the heart of the video was telling one of my own stories, one of many stories about racism that I've faced from blatant racists, and then the racism that I have faced from non-racists who refuse to become anti-racist, possibly because they didn't know there was a difference, and I wholeheartedly believe that, because I've received thousands, thousands, thousands of DMs, of messages, of comments from people who were saying just that. And so this idea of National Weed Your Garden Day since then has taken on a different meaning for me. Oftentimes this platform is used to talk about personal finance, mental health, boundaries in relationships, maintaining your physical space, your faith. I've never used my platform to address racism really in in any way that I can remember. But one of the weeds that I'm pulling up for National Weed Your Garden Day is the idea that as a Black woman at 39 years old, well-educated, productive citizen, good person all around, that I have to continue to suffer in silence and go along to get along and bury my pain to make people who are more privileged than me, simply because of color, comfortable. That's a weed that I am pulling out of my garden. It's a weed that I have plucked out. And as I started to look at this National Weed Your Garden Day, Here's what I found. Excessive and unwanted weeds will crowd out plant roots and steal the nutrients that are needed for plants to grow nice and healthy. Helpful tips on reducing weeds in your garden. Make sure to keep all weeds away from young plants. Hmm. Make sure to keep all weeds away from young plants. In the story that I told, an older white gentleman essentially blocked me from getting off an elevator after he said ladies first and allowed two white women to get off the elevator. He put a long umbrella up in front of me and looked me in my eyes with the most evil glare I've ever seen and said, I said ladies first. And I knew in that moment, even in the midst of my shock, that he believed that I was less than human. The reality is, for many of my white friends, you have older people in your family who are weeds to the cause of social justice. And you have not kept them away from young plants. You have not kept them 
away from your children, from your grandchildren? You've been silent and said nothing while they perpetuated stereotype after stereotype and dismissed the realities that many black and brown people go through in this country. And my request of you is to pull up the weed. If you say you stand with us, then that is an unwanted weed that must be addressed. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes, it is. But are you the only person who can do it? Yes, you are. Because there's no way that as black and brown people, we can live it and defend it. There's no way for us to have intellectual conversations with people who believe that we are worse than animals and lower than animals. There's no way. The excessive and unwanted just weed of racism is so deep in this country that it will take, it is taking all of us to use our collective voices and say enough is enough, right? Another helpful tip on reducing weeds in your garden, it says it's okay to plant your plants closely together to leave less room for weed growth. That means for me, you will take a stance in becoming a real ally, not a silent bystander. Because what also happened in the elevator is that the other four white people who were on the elevator with me who witnessed this man block me, they got off the elevator and didn't say one word. They didn't try to stop him. They didn't say that's not right. They didn't go get a security guard, tell a bellman. They, they did nothing. It is time for us to be closely planted together if we will acknowledge anti-racism as a real thing, not just being non-racist. Not seeing color and, oh, I love everyone is not enough if you're silent. If you're going to be silent, that means nothing. It's okay to plant your plants closely together to leave less room for weed growth. It's okay. It may not be favorable and there might be people who are upset, but you have so many people who look like me that will be so grateful and so many generations to come that will be grateful if you will plant yourself next to us and stop questioning and doubting what we tell you is our reality. There's no agenda in making up that for many of us, our hearts beat out of our chest every time a police car goes by. There's no agenda in sharing with you the number of times I've walked into an establishment and someone has clutched their purse or someone has told me not to walk by their car. Meanwhile, I have the more expensive car parked across from them, not even thinking about their car. Because I what, look like a hooligan? Probably not. Doubt that. This is going on at every socioeconomic level, at every education level, at every hue of brownness all over this country, and I'm sure all over the world. And the only way that we can weed it out is when you plant yourself closely to us. To say, I never know what to say is not enough. It's not a cop out. You don't, you don't get to have a pass. We don't have a pass in living in brown skin. Why can you have a pass in picking and choosing if and when you want to speak up for us? It also says that if you're going to weed your garden, you have to make sure you don't let any of the weeds go to seed. You don't let any of the weeds go to seed. This is from the Weed Science Society of America. I had never heard of it, <laughs> but it's fascinating. And it talks about how most people don't realize a weed can produce literally thousands or even millions of seeds per plant. Because seeds in the bank is what they call them can remain viable for years and sprout when conditions are right. That means 
Seeds that fall into the ground from a weed can take several years before they even sprout. So they're always kind of laying there under the surface waiting for a time to come out. There are so many weeds that have taken root in this country and sprinkled seeds for 400 plus years. And even when you don't think that you would do anything like the many atrocities that I'm sure you have been hearing of and seeing as more black and brown people tell their stories. You may think that you're exempt from behaving that way. Amy Cooper in Central Park may have thought as a liberal, from what I understand, that she would never behave that way. But when the condition was right, that seed that was laying under the surface found a way to sprout immediately as she went into theatrical efforts to appear as if a black man was attacking her as she called the police because she did not want to be told what to do by a black man. It is so important now more than ever that we be aware of the weeds among us and that every single one of us makes the effort to pull the weeds as soon as we see them. If you refuse to pull up the weeds, they will not only continue to kill us, but eventually that type of hate will destroy this nation. I truly believe it. And so whether you want to look at it as pruning or weeding or whatever outdoor green activity you may be accustomed to, it's time. It's past time. This is overdue. And each and every one of us Black, white, brown, yellow, purple, red have some really important questions that we need to start asking ourselves. We got some work to do, all of us, all of us. So my request of you is to think about who are the weeds among you? Who are the people that you have allowed to let slide with their racist comments and remarks? Who are the people that you've seen racially profile someone, treat someone differently at work, make up a story about somebody that you know wasn't right? Who are the weeds among you and are you willing to call them out and pluck them out? Because the reason that people keep going and keep doing it and keep allowing the seeds to fall from generation to generation is because of the silence. That silence makes you complicit. That silence is you saying, well, as long as it's not me, I'm going to mind my business. They'll figure it out. My second request of you is to ask, what have you allowed to take root in your subconscious? What have you allowed to take root Because Amy Cooper allowed some stuff to take root in her. And it came out the moment she had the opportunity. And perhaps had she gone through National Weed Yourself Day (laughs) or ever been told possibly about pruning out limiting beliefs, cutting off dead thoughts and ideas that just don't serve who she wants to be. Perhaps that incident could have ended with a, oh, wow, I didn't see the sign. I'm so sorry about that. And we would never know who Amy Cooper or Christian Cooper, the the black man who was bird watching, who inconvenienced her. Perhaps we would never know their names. Right? Who are the weeds among us? Who are the weeds among you? Are you willing to call them out and pluck them out? And what have you allowed to take root in your own subconscious? This, There's no shame. There's no shame here. 
I just want you to be aware because from the messages that I've read ever since I posted that video, I truly believe that many, 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 many people who have gone silent, it wasn't because you were bad. It wasn't because you didn't care. Some of you didn't even notice. You walk right by and didn't even recognize what was going on. Some of you, the seeds that have dropped to you have made you go, well, there must be a reason that that happened. Meanwhile, people like me are afraid because we know even if we're not guilty, there doesn't need to be a reason. We have so far to go. We have so far to go. I remember the LA riots like they were yesterday. I was 11 years old, I believe, writing out Black-owned business signs to give out to people in my neighborhood so that the storefront that I lived above and the places across the street and next to us would not be burned down. And I remember telling my mom as a little girl, I can't wait till I grow up because all the racists are going to die. And then we can just all be friends and all be free. And here we are 30 years later and as the mother of a 12-year-old girl, I have to look her in the eyes and say, no, it didn't die out because too many seeds were planted that people are ignoring. I don't want my grandchild 30 years from now to repeat this type of history. And I hope and pray that if you're listening to this, you don't either. So there is no judgment. I just want to encourage. I just want to encourage that you pick a side. It's not enough to be not racist. You have to make a decision to be anti-racist. And to do your work and to pluck up the weeds among you, to call them out and to let them know that time's up, enough is enough, and you stand with and for Black lives. I want my grandchildren to experience a United States where all lives matter. I pray that my grandchildren never feel the need to point out, but Black Lives Matter. I pray for the time when all lives mattering really will mean all lives. I just pray for peace, man. I pray for peace. I usually have a lot of words. And honestly, I said so much of this just kind of talking that I don't even know (laughs) when it all comes together, if it'll make sense. I hope that something new takes root. I hope that I've planted a seed somehow, whether it be through that IGTV video or through this episode, but just planted a seed that it's time It's time to pull weeds and it's time to prune and it's time for us to do the work so we can show up better than this (sighs) because I believe that we're better than this. So next week, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming You are welcome to share any ideas, any thoughts in the comments on my social media, Seek Wisdom PCW. Um, And more than anything, again, I just want to encourage you to really ask yourself the question and really be bold and courageous when the names come up for you. 
And you got to be honest about any of it. I don't know, man. God bless you guys. My heart is still hurting. I'm not sleeping as much. I'm not eating as much. And I've never felt this weird mix of hopeless and hopeful all at the same time. I really haven't. It's weird. On one hand, it's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then on the other hand, it's like, but wow, what if things are really changing? Because change is always uncomfortable, right? Especially when it's involuntary, (laughs) when you weren't planning and prepping for it in this way. It's a lot of mixed emotions for all of us. And I pray that we show ourselves grace, show each other grace and just do the work. So, like I said, next week, we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. I don't even know what next week is, but it'll be back in our regular format. So until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.